So I'm in Japan, I'm at a show called SeaTech 2019, and we're talking about high-tech stuff here. And after some time, you end up asking yourself the question, where are all the robots at? Now, obviously, Japanese pop culture has a certain connotation to it when it comes to high-tech gadgets and whatnot, and robots is kind of high on that list. But in this video, we're not really talking about Gundams or anything that you might see in anime today. But don't get me wrong, I love that stuff. There are a couple of applications being shown in a health context here at SeaTech though. More on the connection between tech and lifestyle is available in another video that I did here on Pocket Now. And there's also a video over on my channel, youtube.com slash Joshua Vergara. Check it in the cards and in the links down below. No, in this video, we're going to talk about the way that robotics is actually permeating into everyday life in a country like Japan. Some of the applications are pretty obvious, like from a business and industrial standpoint, but then there are other reasons why robotics takes on a whole different meaning here in Japan. Let's start with the industry stuff first. There are some obvious reasons why robotics is important for industry. It's because it's trying to replace the human hands that might be doing menial tasks. There's a mixture of robotic arms and organizers that are programmed to make certain tasks easier. In that case, there might be some sort of programming or learning process so that the robot can accurately do its job. I think an obvious example of robotics here in Japan is going to be something that we're all a little bit familiar with autonomous vehicles. This is an example of a people carrier that actually has autonomous technology inside of it uh, that tries to recognize when all of the stoplights and signals, uh, where they are rather, uh, that way it knows when to stop, where to stop, and how to get people from point A to point B. And also kind of a fun thing about this autonomous vehicle, um, its override technology is not about a steering wheel or anything like that. I found this really funny. It's an Xbox controller. <laughs> I would have thought it was a PS4 controller, but no, Xbox is what they chose. And also this autonomous vehicle is being developed by a company that you may not even associate with something like this, TDK. But those are all of the obvious applications of robotics and in industry. What about interpersonal relations or robot to person relations? Obviously in Japanese pop culture, this is a big thing. And there is a little bit of that here at SeaTech 2019. Well, that's where we get into some of the more fun and interesting and quirky tech. At first, it seems like these kinds of robots are something out of a sci-fi movie or out of anime, obviously. But there's a real benefit to the way that these machines are built. They're literally putting a face to the tech that we might end up using in our daily lives. That can include AI, machine learning, anything that has to do with 5G data being passed through a very fast channel, and even just for things like info gathering for practical purposes. Take, for example, the iBo. Probably the cutest robot here at the show, one that has been around for a bit, already has a lot of fans, is made by Sony, and its biggest fan is Issa Rodriguez, my girlfriend. Ibo's already a fun companion for anyone that wants a robot dog, but in this context, it is connected to the smart appliances in this smart home so that it can tell you when things are happening. For example, Ibo can just sort of walk up to the person, start barking, and that is a signal to me, the user, that the oven is done cooking or the fridge is open. It's cute, it's fun, and it's a way of injecting high tech into a practical everyday scenario. But how about literally putting a digital, maybe cute face onto a piece of software? That sounds a little bit more like Japanese pop culture, and Bandai Namco had something just like that at their booth, next to the robot that was slaying that arcade game. Literally, it's an anime girl's face on a spherical object that moves around based upon a camera that is in the base. And when it detects where you, the person, are, it can actually move and give facial expressions so that you can interact more naturally with it. I get it, this might be a little bit creepy in some ways, but in a society like Japan, this is exactly the kind of thing that makes it easier to interact with technology. And it's a little bit more uh, common here, so it's uh, less of a shock to the people who live in Japan. Here's another example, this really cool looking Samurai AI. It's a cool little robot that helps with gathering demographic info before students come into a room for an exam. This particular robot was right next to the student lounge, so that makes sense. So that's sort of the mixture that Japanese tech tends to have, and I personally love it. I think it's great uh, how something could be really fun on the outside, but then really practical and useful on the inside. So that way, it's just easier to interact and to relate to the thing that's trying to get info from you. And that's basically the state of robots uh, in high tech right now in Japan, at least based upon what I saw here at SeaTech 2019. But there is one more robot that I wanted to show you, and it's a bit of a mix of all of the things that I just said. It's also the coolest looking one. This is a robot by a company called Shadow, which is partially funded by ANA, which is the biggest airline here in Japan. The gentleman back there is wearing gloves that provide a one-to-one -one recreation of the movements to the robot hands, and he's literally stacking cups delicately using that robot. 
Both the robot hands and the gloves have sensors on the fingertips and also on the palm so that the user can feel the pressure at which the object is resisting the grip. That's the reason why you could actually shake hands with this robot. Uh, technically, you're shaking hands with somebody else, but through a robot third-party middleman type thing. There are also safeguards in place so that even if the user performs some sort of really uh, fast or big movement, the robot is not going to just one-to-one -one do it and potentially smack somebody to oblivion. <laughs> This is probably the coolest looking robot here. Uh, and it has that human element to it as well. So it's sort of a mixture of the two. And that makes a lot of sense for these applications where you can have somebody actually performing a particular task that requires some finesse. Or you can do something like have the robot arm somewhere very, very far away. And you can do things like cook for somebody else. That's more of a nebulous example, obviously, uh, but it is something that they said, and the demo was stacking cups, and it was called a cooking demo. So think about it that way. Uh, somebody like me cooking for somebody else in a whole nother country using those gloves. But in any case, I'm gonna go ahead and call in on this one and leave you with the image of those robot hands and just us shaking its hand. It was a really odd experience, uh, but it just shows uh, how high-tech things are becoming here in Japan, and robots are not being left in the dust. I have another video here on Pocket Now talking about tech in general in Japan and based upon the snapshot that I've gotten here at SeaTech 2019. Uh, yeah, super happy to be here in Japan and for this particular show that might become part of the yearly rotation, which would be awesome because you know what? I just really love Japan. I love coming here and it's really awesome. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of that snapshot in these videos. In any case, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. You can also check out what I'm up to here in Japan over on my channel, youtube.com slash Joshua Vergara. Uh, after that, get into the comment sections. Let us know what you think about this content and uh, your thoughts on tech in Japan in general for this one in particular. But with all of that said, we're just gonna go ahead and see you in our next video.